In this MATLAB video, we're going to be talking about how to extract data from a, a three-dimensional data structure. So we've already written this code. Uh, I've called out a file path. I have an array, a cell array with my file names in it. I'm pre-allocating a variable here, creating a figure, and then I have this loop that automatically changes its size based on the number of files I have. I load my data into a structure, or I load into a variable data, and then I get the field names, I extract uh, the data from my field names, and then I go and I find the force. So if I run this code right now, it should create a plot of the force in the vertical direction that's stored inside this data set. Okay, and it does. Very pretty graph. It has the classic double humps of a walking ground reaction force. But that's not what we're focusing on in this video. In this video, we're going to focus on what's going on inside data. So just as a reminder, the command prompt, if I type data, it tells me that data is a structure with the field slow underscore walking underscore two, which was the name of my file. So I actually want vec, where I've already uh, I've figured out what the field name was, because that will change with my file. So f should give me, if I type f down here, F gives me slow a cell array with slow walking, and then VEC is my data. So VEC is what we want. VEC is where we have the things that are stored. And right now we're going to focus on the kinematic data, the trajectories. So I want VEC.trajectories. So the command prompt, VEC trajectories, I have labeled and unidentified markers. Uh, all of the labeled ones correspond to the markers on the data set that we had and unidentified ones or any markers that show up and disappear or just aren't generally labeled. So we're going to do vec.trajectories.labeled. And then that itself is a structure. So we've got structures inside of structures inside of structures. And data is where the data is actually stored. So there's a bunch of different important things here. Um, the count tells us how many markers there are. The labels tells us uh, what each marker is. Okay, so if I labeled dot dot labels, it will give me this cell array that has names like LIAS or LIPS. And those refer to markers that you should be able to identify based on the schematic that you've been provided with uh, in your for your marker set, for your data set. So those correspond to different markers. Those are the names of markers. And so this field in the structure, the labels, tells you what is inside your field. Now the data, so back up here to labeled, the data field is what actually contains the data. And you'll see, if you look here, that data is a double, which is great. That means it's numbers. That's what we can manipulate and what we can do things with and plot. Uh, but it's a 20 by 4 by 500 structure. So this is a three-dimensional structure. And that three-dimensional structure, so um, I'm going to call this, I'm going to up arrow labeled dot data and semicolon. And over here at the command prompt, I'm going to go ahead and say position equals all of that. And over in the workspace, you'll see a new variable pops up. Okay, so position.vec.trajectories.labeled.data and the trajectories.labeled.data will be the same every time. So we can copy and paste that up here. So I'm going to clean up this um, loop a little bit. And I'm going to say here, extract force information. I'm going to go ahead and comment out the plot right now because we're not going to plot at the moment. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a, a row here. Extract marker position information. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the code that just worked down at the command line to give us data. Position vec trajectory is labeled dot data. And I can do that because this part is going to be the same no matter what the file name is. Inside every file, it's going to be the same. So then 
maybe what I want to plot is uh, one of these markers. So we'll pick a marker here. Uh, we'll pick this first one. Anti in or anterior sacroiliac joint is the R is the left on the left side is what this stands for. L I A S. Over here we've got the R I A S. Um, so. Actually, we'll, we'll do the RIAS because it's in the fourth position and it's not the first position. So it's the fourth marker, and my data was this 20 by 4 by 500 double. So if I want the position of the RAIS marker, that means that I'm going to, inside my position vector, which is a set of doubles, uh, I am going to choose the fourth one, I am going to choose all four of the X, Y, Z and an extra one uh, that is for some trigger data that we don't have in this data set, and then all of the time, the 500. Okay, so I'm going to do that, and over in the workspace, watch the workspace, we get a new vector, pose RAIS, which is a 1 by 4 by 500 double, which is great. Now I should be able to do something like figure plot uh, position, oh, come, come back, pose RAIS, and uh, we'll do one comma, uh, maybe two. I'm just going to pick one of the directions, x, y, and z, one, two, three, x, y, z, um, and all of the time. So I'm just going to go ahead and plot. And MATLAB gets upset because the function plot cannot have more than two dimensions. So you look at this and you say, well, but it doesn't have more than two dimensions. I have two singleton dimensions and one dimension with my time. I want to plot that. You should be able to plot that. Surely you can plot that, MATLAB. Um, but MATLAB doesn't, doesn't actually do that. So what we're going to do then is in, when we create this pose RAIS, we're going to use the command squeeze. And if you need help on squeeze, you can go to the MATLAB help, the home, the help up here. So search for squeeze. And the really brief summary there just says remove singleton dimensions, which is exactly what we want. We want to remove our singleton dimensions. Okay, so you can read more about it in the help file there, but we want to remove our singleton dimension. So now I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go ahead and add an extra S on the end here so that we can compare pose the original one and this one uh, easily. But over here, you'll see that now I get a 4 by 500 double instead of a 1 by 4 by 500 double. And now if I go to figure, or if I go to my figure plot, and I plot this, now I don't need the one here because I've gotten rid of that dimension. I can just plot two comma all the time and I get a graph of my figure. So squeeze is a really powerful way to remove those dimensions and up here uh, if we wanted to do that I would say I would do this. I would copy and paste this line into my for loop and I will get rid of the S there. We just had that in there for demonstrating the purpose of, of the comparing the two different approaches. Uh, so I'm going to choose four because I know that if I wanted to be really smart, I could do something like I did up here where we use the field names. We could do the field names of um, the structure and, and get out the information, um, but we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go ahead and, and go with this. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, if I have multiple data sets and I maybe want to com consider all of these together, um, I'm going to go ahead and make a cell array for the position right anterior of sacred iliac marker so that I can compare it between subjects or between trials or whatever so that I have it all stored. But you'll note that I get this orange underline when I do that. And it says, the error message says, the variable appears to change size on every loop iteration within the script. Consider pre-allocating for speed. And what that means is that it's going to get bigger and bigger every time, right? So the first time I run it, it'll store something, the computer stores something to this variable. And then the next time I run it, it needs to store a second thing, but now it's bigger and it didn't allocate enough memory 
So it's going to store another thing, or it's going to create a copy of that variable with both things. And then the third time, it's going to create a third copy of that variable, and so on. And so you start to use up memory really quickly when you do that. So to fix that problem, we'll go up here, and we'll actually just copy and paste this line right here that we made for the force variable. And my computer is frozen. So we'll go up here and we'll copy and paste this force z variable and rename it with our new vector here. And now if we go back down here, that orange line has gone away. So now if I run this code, it should work. Go back to the editor tab, run. And a blank figure pops up because we didn't actually put anything in there. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how to use the squeeze marker and how you can go ahead and, and be storing things inside your loop so that every time you loop, you store the data and then you can either do something with it and build a graph there or you can build graphs at the end outside using a different loop or there's a lot of different ways you can approach that piece of things. Uh, but hopefully this gives you an idea of a way to get started and a way to program smarter uh, not harder. If you have 400 lines of code for this assignment, you probably have too many. I will see you in class. Bring your questions there.